Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to St Andrew's Cathedral. I'm Peter Meyer, editor of the Sydney Organ Journal, standing in for Ross Cobb, the Cathedral Director of Music, who will be back from England tomorrow. This month, we mark the sesquicentenary, 150 years since this organ was first played here in St Andrew's Cathedral. It had played the previous year, 1866, in the, the London factory of William Hill and Son, where it was made. The organ was the design of two Sydney signers, the architect of the cathedral, Blackett, who even designed the shape and the um, design of the pipes, though the organ builder in London took the liberty of making some changes to that design by adding the two towers at the side of the front of the organ. And the other person involved with the design was William Henry Nash, the organist at Christ Church St Lawrence. Anyway, the organ arrived in Sydney in April 1867 and it was erected the following, in the following weeks until by July a Melbourne organist by the name of Charles Edward Horsley came up from Melbourne and without asking any permission helped himself to playing it um, causing a certain amount of consternation. The organ was locked up but he played it so well he was a brilliant organist, a friend of Mendelssohn and a pupil of Mendelssohn uh, that um, he was invited to give uh, an informal recital in the middle of July 1867 to the governor's wife, the bishop, the dean, their wives and uh, some others. And that was the first official playing and the first piece he played was uh, an improvisation on the hymn all people that on earth do dwell to the tune we know today as Old Hundredth. The organ cost £2,000, $4,000 in today's money and this was raised by the women of the diocese and so the first two official recitals were for the benefit of those who had subscribed very quickly and very generously. The, the, the money was raised in less than two months by the women to pay for it. It was, of course, the largest organ in Australia at the time that it arrived here. And very important, um, it, was the, um, it was the first organ by William Hill to arrive in New South Wales. And, of course, 20 years later, the, the biggest organ ever made by Hill arrived in Sydney Town Hall and, and uh, organs by Hill are still perhaps the most beautiful organs that we have in Sydney. Well, I could go on and on, but I, I must uh, not give you a history lecture. It's really my privilege today to welcome uh, Dr. Wilbur Hughes, um, one of the um, several very fine organists who live in Bowra. I don't, I don't know how Bowra can be so lucky. I think there are more good organists down there than there are in the whole of Sydney. At any rate, uh, Dr Hughes is one of them and uh, he's going to introduce um, his, uh, inst his, his uh, fellow colleagues and uh, I'll ask him to do that before I open the proceedings with prayer. Wilbur. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I've been coming to these organ recitals every Thursday 
although there was a, a small period when there were Fridays since 1955. So they've been weekly since then. So this is nothing new. <clears throat> and uh, during that time, especially in the past 10 years, I've been coming to organ recitals and seeing many organists go to sleep during the recital. And for that reason, I introduced <coughs> some instruments to try and wake up, one. Number two, I did compose some rather dissonant pieces so that you would all uh, either feel very uncomfortable and wake up for that, if nothing else. So I want to introduce the miserable, uh, sorry, not the miserable, the people who've been forced to play my miserable music, <coughs> Jacinta McMichaels on, on piccolo and on flute, Gregory Jones and his tame two instruments, the soprano clarinet and the ordinary clarinet, B flat clarinet, as is uh, Andrew Doyle's wife, Alicia, <coughs> uh, who is also playing for both instruments, very hard to change. Uh, and then we're very lucky to have, have Bernie Chambers, uh, Riley Chambers here, um, on the uh, very short term because uh, she wasn't expecting to come, but she was very kind to do it because a usual player could be. And thank you very much, Bridie, for coming. And uh, I've already introduced Andrew Doyle, who's been playing bass clarinet for me for some time. So uh, they are going to play first this fugue of Bach, which those who are organists <coughs> will find that they probably couldn't play nearly as fast as they can. That fugue, of course, um, comes from a dance, and um, you'll hear that aspect of it very clearly. If you pray, please pray with me. Prosper, O Lord, the handiwork of all musicians who minister to us. May their music be a foretaste of the divine praises of your everlasting kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Hughes and his musicians.
This afternoon. Um, it's been a wonderful performance. I'm sure we've all enjoyed the music today. Welcome here to people who have been passing by and come in, uh, but, and there's been people from Toowoomba and, and from parts of Asia, but thank you especially to those people who have come to listen to Dr. Hughes and the performers. Um, those, the performers would well know how widely known Dr. Hughes is around the traps. 
Now, there's a story that's, go, that's told of two Australians who were visiting Rome and they were waiting for the Pope to appear on the balcony. Suddenly, the shutters opened and there were two distinguished people out there, men out there waving to the crowd. A journalist asked one of the Australians, Who, who's the stranger up there on the balcony? And the, the Australian answered, that's easy, mate. One is Dr. Wilbur Hughes from Barrel, and the other one, I'm blowed if I know who the chap in white is. Anyway, it's been wonderful to have you here this afternoon, and I'd like you to, oh, there's no even song this afternoon here at the cathedral, and I'd like you all to join with me in thanking all our performers now. Thank you so much. <laughs>